Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 22 and a new experiment today where we're going to take a look at what would happen if the Welsh Premier League did have uh, a billion pounds in every single team. Um, now we have tried this experiment in the past, you can see the Welsh League down in 109th place in competition reputation. Uh, it's pretty poor where they're finishing up down there, way, way down on a lot of um, reasonable leagues. They're way below the Greek National C division. Um, they are not the big guns in European league football, because it's just Europe, I think. I don't even think this stretches out to the entire world. Um, so they're, they're pretty poor. And what we're going to try and do is see if we can get them to bump up quite a bit. You can see that the Welsh League... You know, they have Cardiff, Met Uni and Flint Town in there, Connors Key. Uh, it's going to take a lot to get them up. And the worst thing is that even if they have a billion pounds, their reputation is still really poor. Even if they manage to sign good players, they'd have to do well in European competition to raise a competition reputation, which would raise their reputation. Um, realistically, a billion pounds does nothing for these teams and they go on spending 50 grand a year to... to just keep doing what they're doing because they can't attract anybody better than they already have. So on that basis, not only have I given them uh, 900 million rather than a billion just in case it ticks over, uh, over 1 billion, um, I've also bumped their reputation up to the maximum of 10,000. That means that every single team in the Welsh Premier League now has a reputation greater than Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Man United. They are every team in the Welsh Premier League is now a bigger club in the eyes of the game than any other club in world football. And I'm hoping that that will lead to the taps being open, big players coming in. I mean, you will see these clubs do not have big facilities, 2,500. They get 379 fans coming along to each game. Um, it's not necessarily still going to change overnight, but I think it's going to lead to some really interesting uh, effects over the first few years and then hopefully longer term it might give them a bit more security uh, in terms of uh, being able to hold on to that reputation as their money is spent as the league uh, starts to go up the reputation rankings because they're doing well in Europe I think it could have a really good effect on the club um, so we'll just have to see how that all plays out we'll also keep an eye on their facilities see if they can do uh, any decent things here because they've got poor facilities across the board as well. Hopefully a lot of new stadiums going in. Uh, there should be quite a few things to check in on. So what I am going to do is go forward just five years to begin with. We'll see where the Welsh Premier League has ended up in terms of reputation. It's 109th at the moment. We'll see if they're signing any big players and then we'll probably take a much bigger jump forward as well still in this episode and see how they're getting on. So let's go forward five years now and take a look. Well, we are five years into the future. You can see Aberystwyth have been the big winners over the last four years. TNS, uh, the New Saints, did manage to get the first league title, but after that, it's been all Aberystwyth. And interestingly, you can see they've now jumped up to 75th. So they're actually above the Finnish and Albanian first divisions, uh, just below the Croatian third division uh, and the Israeli National League. But they have jumped up quite a way. I think if we start just by looking at their transfers over the last few years, uh, sort them by fee, um, you can see Aberystwyth went on an absolute spree. They spent eleven and a half million pounds. Look at the players they brought in: Fermenia, Darlo, Hendrick, McNeil, Ritchie, Dwight Gale coming in. Loads of players from Newcastle uh, making the move to Aberystwyth. That is something I was not expecting to see. Uh, Matteo Meyer has now left Aberystwyth. But the next year, you can see TNS spending 12.25 million on Carl Rushworth. Uh, Ryan Porteous moving, another Newcastle player joining the Welsh League. Quite a few players going, and a lot more money being spent across the board, making that league even stronger. The following year, 23 million on Quado Bar. Patrick Bamford now plies his trade uh, for Abu Wistwith. Look at him there. Uh, their key striker. Uh, Lacardia, a former wonder kid of the game, he has since moved on from the Welsh League, uh, but they've really brought in some good players uh, into the into the league here. This is much better than I was expecting them to do, to be honest. Um, Twenty two million, uh, Mohamed Darame leaving for Milan, so you're seeing other teams come in now and try and steal good players 
from this league, but still plenty of other players joining. Uh, transfer fees dropping a little bit until Aberystwyth have gone another absolute spree, bringing in the likes of Nico Williams for 46.5 million, 23 million on Gianluca Busio, Antonio Rudiger, Ariola. These are big names. Mengi, a good one, the kid going to Aberystwyth. with Shab Pedro has left the league now. Jada Silva and Tete coming in, Connor's Key starting to open the taps. But Aberystwyth with absolutely hammering the league with cash right now. And if you look at their squad uh, and their transfer value in that squad, it's a decent team they're pulling together. Um, they could do reasonably well. Patrick Bamford now in the Welsh League, 13 and 20 or 24 and 40 overall. And then he got 18 and 31 appearances after that as well. So he's doing well for Aberystwyth up front. An England striker playing in the Welsh League. Carl Darlow in there as well. Absolutely love that. And if you look at the Welsh Premier League over the past few seasons, uh, you can see Aberystwyth, TNS uh, and Kefin Druid. Sorry to the Welsh fans out there. I am going to butcher some of these names. That is a fact. But Aberystwyth dominating this league, rarely losing games. And picking up four straight league titles. TNS also did well, and it looks like Druid's up there uh, doing well as well. So maybe these are the three teams we can take a look at. If we look at Kef and Druid's uh, to begin with and their senior squad schedule over the last maybe three years, see if they get through European qualification, knocked out straight away that season. The next year, they do make it to the third qualifying round, second leg, lose that to Utrecht. Uh, and then the following year, no European football for them. Uh, so they just missed out on that one. TNS obviously won the first league title. Let's take a look if they did well in Europe. Conference League didn't make it through. But then look at that. They made it into the Europa League, beating FC Inter. I mean, it was a favourable draw. Interestingly, they lost to FC Inter in the Champions League one but then beat them in the Europa League one which is interesting and then in the group stages a draw with Partizan beaten by Spurs any famous wins in there win over Partizan but didn't particularly go too well after that they did make it to the knockout stages uh, of the Europa Conference League 3-2 defeat in the first game um, down there first knockout round oh that's a straight shootout unfortunately knocked out an extra time that's a real shame they didn't manage to make it a bit further and then the following year, out in the qualifying ground. Next time round, again, out in the Conference League qualifiers. So not doing too well. And once more, out in the Conference League qualifiers. So TNS, they did make it into one Europa League group stage, which is pretty good. But all our hopes now falling on Aberystwyth. Have they made the Champions League? That would be the real win. Uh, they won the league their second season. So this is the season they won the league. You can see didn't make it into the Conference League. The following year, though, look at that. They made it into the Champions League. They took out Young Boys. They took out Futsal Club. I mean, it's, that's a Romanian team. I don't even know what team that is. Shamrock Rovers absolutely destroyed. Beating Partizan home and away. And they made it into the Champions League. 3-1 defeat at home by Manchester United. 2-1 defeat. I mean, group of death over here. 2-0 to Rangers. 2-1 at home, though. They did get a goal there. United beat them 2-0, then PSG beat them 2-0, so they went straight out after that. But they made the Champions League group stages, that's incredible. And then the next year they do the same again, they beat Bronby and make the Champions League group stages. Smashed by Monaco, Bayern and Roma, uh, six defeats in six games. But I'm absolutely in love with the fact that they made the Champions League three seasons in a row, they make the Champions League group stages. They beat Shakhtar Donetsk 3-1. Patrick Bamford on the score sheet. And then in the group stage, Real Madrid, Milan and Benfica, who they beat 3-0. And then lose away, lose at the Bernabeu 3-0. And then lose 3-1 at home to AC Milan. So no magical finish there as they, they fail to get out of the Champions League. But that is some absolute progress there. The fact that they've already made it up to 76th. You've got to, got to love that really. Um, it's a shame you can't see this graph in a bit more detail. That, that is quite annoying. But they were 85th before. 109th, 11th. Actually dropped a bit. 8th, 96th, 85th. And then shooting up to 75th place. All my money on Aberystwyth here. They've done extremely well to get to this point. Let's go forward maybe another 
uh, 10 years or 15 years. Let's go forward 15 years and see how they're getting on. Well, we are another 15 years into the future, and you know what? The Welsh League really has moved on quite a bit in the 20 years since we gave them all this money. They've gone from 17th, peaking at 8th two years in a row, and then just falling back to 11th. But that's a sign that they must have done really well. You can see they're up above the Belgian League, the Russian League, just below the Scottish and Turkish Leagues. They've really done well. They weren't far off the Eredivisie, and bearing in mind that it has Ajax in it, they have done <laughs> extremely well over that time. We will start by looking at the transfers. This is when we left off before Rob Holding coming in. I mean, there's so many good players coming across. Their reputation will have taken a dive more recently uh, because it does fall off quite quickly. And you can see uh, the next season, mostly big name players leaving. Nico Williams, the biggest player of all to leave. But they do go out and spend some more money. Notice it's championship teams around this point. Uh, the amount of money that they're spending is dropping as well. Then it really drops the next year. 22 million bringing in Frank Asante from Crystal Palace. But generally the money's kind of stabilising in the low single millions rather than multiples of, of 10s, 20s, 30s that we saw initially. It's just fallen off a little bit. Um, TNS app being absolutely wiped out. I wonder if they were struggling with financial fair play. At that point, same thing happens to the Druids the next year. A uh, bit of internal transfers going on as well. Um, and that takes you up to the modern day. So that money really did stabilise a little bit. Um, if we do have a look at the league table uh, over the last few years. So when we left off, Aberystwyth were dominating. TNS actually came back and took it by 1.3 way tie at the top. You can see they've got an extra league place at this point as well. Uh, European place at this point. As Connor's key winner title, uh, it does start to, to jump through them. Dru the Druids get a title as well. Aberystwyth do come back, start to go on a little period of dominance. Still, Aberystwyth looking like the big team. Druids up there, TLS up there. Connor's key occasionally sneaking in there. But it looks like they've managed to get four European places now. Out of a league of 12, that isn't particularly bad going. But Aberystwyth, the main winners over this period of time. Druids and TNS, I think the other teams to look at. We could look at Connor's key as well. Uh, but if we maybe start with the Druids, who've done well recently, um, if we just have a look at their senior squad schedule, um, I might also get rid of all competitions here and then just put in the European ones. And they should make it a little bit quicker to see how they got on over the last few years. You can see, not out of the Conference League that time, uh, pretty disappointing run for them to be honest not making the group stage and then finally they make the group stages here just beaten by Rangers they beat young boys uh, and they do get a win against Copenhagen 2-0 at home but no major success into the conference league the next time around they do beat Villarreal 2-0 at home and they beat this team 2-0 as well but it wasn't enough to get them out of their group stage nobody out of the group stages yet until now Look at that. They uh, lose to Salzburg to end up in the Conference League. Beat TPS. Um, Sarajevo beaten. Viking beaten. Randers a difficult team in there. But they make it out of the group. And then they beat Arda uh, to make it to the quarterfinals. But Sevilla do the job on them there. Uh, and they can't quite make any more progress. You can see not making it into the group stage. Then they make it to the knockout stage. It's still the Conference League for them though. Uh, Conference League again. But they are more regularly getting out of that group now. Uh, that looked like an automatic place in the Europa League. Uh, ended up going down to the Conference League and getting knocked out once more. Uh, same thing happens again. They do beat Shakhtar 2-1 but can't see it off. Uh, they're straight into the Champions League group stages here. No more qualifiers. That's how much the reputation's gone up by this point. Um, and you can see they don't do too well. A couple of draws in there. The next year again a couple of draws in there, including a two-all draw at home against Liverpool. That's a that's a big result there for them. A two-all draw with Liverpool. That was a really tough group, and they managed to get two points out of it. You've got to be pretty happy with that. Um, TNS, if we do the same for them, just have a quick look at their schedule over the last few years. Uh, again, let's, let's see if we can fix this. Just make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, taking a little while to load. There we go. Uh, and you can see that they actually did quite well, look. Into the knockout stages of the Conference League. 
We'll just look out for the knockout stages ones here, go through it a bit quicker. I mean, they did make the uh, quarterfinals there, but by Leverkusen beat them. Nice, they beat Celtic, establishing dominance over the Scottish sides. Um, they're not doing too well for a little while. They do make it to the, I mean, bear in mind this is the Europa League, that they've managed to make it to the second knockout round of a few years in a row as well. And then more recently, it's just trailed off for TNS, where they've been overtaken by the Druids. But the real money is on Aberystwyth. They did so well uh, the first time that we looked at them. But let's uh, let's just take a look, see if we can get one Welsh team into the later stages of the knockout rounds. Obviously, they were in the Champions League group stages. They do make it to the Europa League knockout stages, beaten by Roma in both legs. Uh, they do get pest. Uh, in the Conference League to Hertha Berlin but can't beat them. Uh, the next year, no European football for them. Uh, a few years with no European football when they just fall out of those places. But then they come back as champions and they actually draw with Barcelona at home. Pedri scoring um, at the Parque Escarlets. Uh, that's a bigger stadium for them now, 12,000 fans in there. They draw with Leipzig as well, so they did well in the Champions League group stages. Uh, again, they beat Liverpool 2-1 at home. What a famous night that would have been. Again, at the Park of Scarlets. And then against Lyon, they beat them 2-1 as well. Uh, much lower attendance than the Lyon game. They dropped 10,000 fans from Liverpool to Lyon, which is strange. But they don't make it out of their group. Going into the Europa League and getting beaten by Celta Vigo. Not a bad run there, though. Champions League gets smashed. That's a real group of death, that one. Uh, knockout stages again, knockout stages. They do manage to make it through here 6-3 against Montpellier, but in the second round beaten by Braga. And then uh, not much more success, to be honest, after that. But it has done wonders for their competition. Up in the top 15 now, 11th place, 10th place. They were in 8th for a little while. And if we just have a look at their facilities at this point, you can see... Uh, brand new stadium, 6,000 seats. They have to go to a different one for European matches. Um, but they have excellent youth and training facilities, top corporate facilities, brand new stadium. Pretty good going for them. Uh, Bala Stadium there as well. Uh, I think that's a new one, 2024 for them. But all of these clubs now getting new stadiums, getting uh, lots of improvements in their training facilities as well. Uh, all of them with either excellent um, this team Flint Town not doing too well with their money they also got money but they're not spending it very well um, and there will be some newly promoted teams in there as well TNS doing quite well excellent youth and training facilities so uh, if we do go to Aberystwyth again and just have a look at their club details you can see reputation's gone down to 6,000 I'm not going to mess with that again still got half their money they've got an underwriter sugar daddy uh, and very good youth facilities. So they're in pretty good place at this point. Um, now, rather than make this a two-parter, I'm actually just going to go forward because I'm interested to see if they can really make a break into the last stages of European competition, maybe win one of the big trophies. So I'm just going to jump forward now, uh, probably another 10, 15 years. We'll see how they get on without any injections of cash or anything else and see if one of them can make it to a European final, hopefully win a European competition for Welsh football. Well, we are even further forward in the future. You can see the league title really just going between Aberystwyth, Druids and TNS. Barry managed to get in there for one title, uh, but otherwise it's just gone between those three clubs. So we'll jump straight into having a look at whether any of these clubs managed to do well. Starting with the Druids, I think when we left off we were around 2040-41. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the filters. We'll just go straight to the end of each season uh, and see if they did manage to make it through. And Drew is not doing uh, too well to begin with. A couple of knockout appearances. They do make it to the quarterfinals against Rams, but they get beaten in the quarterfinals of the Conference League. Um, hopefully we're looking for a Europa League run. Uh, you can see they do make a Europa League quarterfinal beaten by Freiburg 3-0 uh, on aggregate. So they haven't managed to make a Europa league knockout stage. It'd be nice if one team could make a Champions League knockout stage. As you can see, they do make it all the way to the final of the Conference League. They beat Nantes, uh, Aberdeen, Vorskia along the way. And then in the final against Servet, 
they are beaten 2-1. They take an early lead, but then two goals and a red card for themselves, shooting themselves in the foot there. They could have been the first Welsh team to win a European title, but it just goes by the wayside. Uh, no success the next year. Champions League uh, the year after that, but not getting out of the group. Europa League doesn't go too well. Uh, and you can see it, they, they do kind of hit a wall with the Conference League final. They aren't quite able to make that kick on in the Europa League. And I think they're, they're just falling out of European football now. Champions League group stage. Champions League group stage. They do make the Europa League knockouts. They do make it to the... Uh, where do they make it? The second round uh, of the Europa League knockout stages. But can't get past Celtico. Uh, who've certainly done damage to Welsh teams in the past. Now, that was Druid's TNS. Let's have another very quick look through this. I'm going to absolutely split, sprint through it, and we're only really interested in quarterfinals, semifinals, finals at this point, uh, because we've seen uh, another team already make a final. Again, not doing well there. Even though they won their last two games in that group, they didn't make it through. Uh, second knockout round, but that's Conference League. We want to see a bit more than that. Uh, nothing there. Again, nothing there. Oh, quarterfinal of the Conference League. Not quite a semi. Quarterfinal again the year after. They're just not making that kick on um, group stages. And it looks like TNS have bitten the bullet a little bit. So it's all now on Aberystwyth, to be honest. Nobody else will have made a final. And Aberystwyth with by far the biggest team in the Welsh League. That was where we left off. Nothing that time around. I mean, the trouble is that they probably have gone into a lot of Champions League's group stages, which are extremely hard to get out of. Even to finish third is a real win. They did make it to the Europa League knockout stages, but nothing there. Uh, again, nothing coming up for them there. Oh, they do make... I mean, that's tough, that one. They beat Austria Vienna, they beat Karabag, they beat Monaco. Uh, and this is uh, Conference League. That's a tough draw to get. But they beat Monaco. They make it to the semi finals. They beat <laughs> they beat Final despite two men sent off. Playing with nine men, they beat them 2 1 at home. Then hold out away from home, but are smashed 3 0 by Aston Villa. So two Welsh teams making Conference League finals. And then they just fall out of Europe for a little bit before coming back in, uh, but not making it too far through these competitions. They have a decent run here into the Europa League second round. Nobody's breached the Europa League quarterfinals yet, I don't think. Uh, certainly nobody's made the Champions League knockout stages, and it looks like that is pretty much where it ends, the Conference League death, Elch. Uh, and you can see they have gone up. They finished as high as seventh the league, uh, so really making a big jump up there. They're above the Scottish League. But they are running out of cash a little bit now. If we look at the club details here, reputation still around six thousand. To be fair, they've still got three hundred million in there. Their facilities are all very, very good. They're a strong league now. Strong teams in there, uh, transfer-wise. Over the last few years, what have we seen? Nine million, ten. I mean, it, it's still where it was before. A couple of twenty mils, but those are mostly players leaving the league. Twenty-five, twenty-six in there occasionally. Not quite the money they need to spend. I think if I gave them another billion or so now, and maybe also bumped up the reputation quite a bit, you could start to see them finish a bit higher up the league table. But um, I think my computer might melt if I try and go too far into the future with this one. But let me know down below if you would like to see me go a bit further. Maybe refresh their money, their reputation. Go further into the future and see if they can really breach the upper echelons of the Champions League. Let me know down in the comments. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. But until next time, see ya.